we want to find the limit of the quantity three x cubed plus sine cubed y divided by the quantity seven x cubed plus y cubed as x comma y approaches zero comma zero along two different paths. We want to determine the limit along the path y equals x, which is graphed here in the xy plane, and this is the graph of the surface given by the function, and also along the path y equals negative x, which is graphed here in the xy plane, and once again, this is the surface given by the function. Before we look at this in three dimensions, for review, as x comma y approaches a comma b, the limit of f of x comma y is L if the limit from all paths approaching a comma b exist and are equal to L. So looking at the surface below, if we were approaching the ordered pair a comma b, in order for the limit to exist and to be equal to L from all paths approaching a comma b, we must be approaching the function value L. Now let's look at the graph of the surface given by the function as well as the path y equals x and y equals negative x along the surface. So the surface is graphed here in yellow and the blue line is the path y equals x, the red line is the path y equals negative x. At first glance it does appear as if we may be approaching the same function value along these two paths, but if you look at this at the correct angle, let's say here, notice how there is some space between these two lines and therefore it does appear as if we may be approaching two different values along these two paths. And if this is true, remember this tells us the general limit does not exist. Let's work on determining the limits along these two paths. To help determine the limit along the path y equals x, we will substitute x for y, which will give us the limit as x comma x approaches zero comma zero, and now we substitute x for y in the function, which gives us the quantity three x cubed plus sine cubed x, divided by seven x cubed plus x cubed. Simplifying the function, this is equal to the limit as x comma x approaches zero comma zero of, the numerator stays the same. The denominator is now going to be eight x cubed. Because we're dividing by a monomial, let's write this limit as a sum of two limits. This is equal to the limit as x comma x approaches zero comma zero of three x cubed divided by eight x cubed plus the limit as x comma x approaches zero comma zero of, let's write sine cubed x as sine x cubed divided by eight x cubed. Because we have functions of one variable now, we could just write this as the limit as x approaches zero. But let's go ahead and leave it in this form. Looking at the first limit, notice how this simplifies nicely. x cubed divided by x cubed simplifies to one. We now just have the limit of the constant three eighths, which is just equal to three eighths. But for this next limit, notice how we could place a one here and then factor out one eighth. Let's begin by doing that. So we'd have plus one eighth times the limit as x comma x approaches zero comma zero. Notice how we have sine x cubed divided by x cubed. Let's write that as sine x divided by x cubed, which is equivalent. In this form, we should recognize this as a special limit. Remember the limit as x approaches zero of sine x divided by x is equal to one. So using this special limit, and this property of limits, we can write this as three eighths plus one eighth times the cube of the limit as x comma x approaches zero comma zero of sine x divided by x. 
Notice how here the limit is equal to one, which gives us one cubed. So we have three eighths plus one eighth times one cubed, which is four eighths, which equals one half. So now we know the limit along the path y equals x equals positive one half. Now let's work on determining the limit along the path y equals negative x. For this, we will now substitute negative x for y, which gives us the limit as x comma negative x approaches zero comma zero of three x cubed plus sine cubed negative x divided by seven x cubed plus the cube of negative x. And now let's simplify the function. We have three x cubed. Let's write sine cubed negative x as the cube of sine negative x. In the denominator we have seven x cubed plus this simplifies to negative one x cubed, which gives us six x cubed. And now let's write this as two separate limits. We have the limit of three x cubed divided by six x cubed plus the limit. For the second limit, let's perform a substitution for sine negative x. Sine negative x is equal to negative sine x, and therefore we have the cube of negative sine x divided by six x cubed. Looking at the first limit, x cubed divided by x cubed simplifies to one, leaving us with the limit of three sixths, which equals three sixths or one half. And then we have plus the limit. Notice how we're cubing a negative, so it's going to remain negative. And because we have a one here, instead of factoring out positive one sixth, let's factor out negative one sixth, which will give us minus one sixth. And then we have sine x cubed over x cubed, which we'll write as sine x divided by x raised to the third power. And again, now we can use this property of limits. And now using this property of limits again, we have one half minus one sixth times the cube of the limit of sine x divided by x. So we know the limit is equal to one, and therefore we have one half minus one sixth times one cubed, which is equal to one half minus one sixth, and one half is equal to three sixths, Three six minus one six is two six, which equals one third. And now we know the limit along the path y equals negative x is one third. So because the limit along the path y equals x is one half, and the limit along the path y equals negative x is one third, because we are not approaching the same function value, we know the general limit does not exist. So if we go back to the graph one last time, the graph does seem to verify our work we are not approaching the same function value from these two paths, and therefore the general limit does not exist. I hope you found this helpful.